Hi all, welcome to today's video. The evening corridor, Alex Falls, Click and Fish on a new. So today we're going to talk about how to start exploring your own style of tunes, um, ornamentation in traditional music, and a short tutorial focusing on one tune. Today's tune will be Cooley's Reel or Joe Cooley's Reel. Now, um, this tune, this tutorial, should I say, isn't for beginners. It's not for your first time trying to pick up and play some whistle. So I will assume that you know how to play your scales fairly comfortably and you've maybe learned some things like ba ba black sheep or three blind mice or that sort of thing. So there is some assumed knowledge already for this tutorial, but there are plenty of fantastic tutorials to show you how to go from very, very beginning to playing a simple tune. So I'm not going to cover that kind of ground. This is more to discuss how ornamentation works in traditional Irish music, its place, how it helps the tune grow. So the reason I'm picking Cooley's reel is that it's kind of it's a very, very, very common session tune that you'll hear at most sessions across the country. And for that reason it's a great one to start transferring from the very basic beginner tunes into session tunes and progressing yourself into traditional Irish music more properly. It's also a good way if you're familiar with playing other types of music, it's a good tune to kind of ease yourself into playing trad. Um so yeah, I'll start off by playing it very simply. Just the notes, no ornamentation, no messing and no fuss. So this is Cooley's Reel. So, as you can see, it's a nice tune, uh, there's a bit of variation to it, there's some nice progressions, it, the two halves of it are quite distinct and it's very pleasing to hear for that. But with traditional tunes, we play each half twice generally and each tune in a session is played three times around. Now, there's all kinds of people say there's all sorts of reasons for it, um, for it varying from three being a lucky number in Irish mythology to you know the first time to hear it the second time to practice it the third time to play it in a session um, and if you're that good to just pick up a tune a new tune in a session by ear you probably should be watching this video anyways but regardless um, it's not a very complex tune but there's loads and loads of room for personalization and ornamentation so just as an example of that I'm going to play the tune now my style but a bit slower than I would play it if I was playing it in a session so this is Cooley's Reel my way So, from there, there, I add in quite a lot of, for, particularly for a tune like Cooley's, I add in a lot of what are called rolls. And a roll is basically a series of five grace notes. So the easiest way to demonstrate a roll uh, is a G roll, because it's kind of the, the simplest one to do for whatever reason, or I find them the simplest one to do. So a G roll is very simple. It's the notes G, A, G, F, G, but it's played together very quickly. So it's not, it's, So realistically you want to think of it as moving your middle finger and then tapping the F finger. Right? So just And ideally, this is just a note for helping your practice to learn your roles and stuff, a good way to do it is go and that's just go up and down your scales like that, high notes, low notes, the whole kit kick and caboodle, that's the way to learn. Um so yeah, I like to add in quite a few roles, but if you were to go to the cultist class, they tell you every time there's a double note, so every time, for example, you had BB to roll it. Now, you can do that, certainly, um, but that gets very monotonous, because if you were to go So 
See, there's just roll after roll after roll, and it's going all you're hearing is rolls, and that takes away a lot from what the tune is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a dancing tune, so there's supposed to be some percussion in it. So you can try marhamba, or for example, sorry, um, you can try going, and that there, that that's called a cut. So a cut is just the note above the note you're playing. So if you're playing a V marhamba, you go, that's that there that tapping of your finger you're playing bcb quite quickly and that's a cut it's nice and percussive it can help with move the tune along but it's not the only thing you can do so marhampa for example if you're starting the tune the second time around say right and you're leading into that first part and maybe the rest of the people in the session they're a little off or you're a little off them or you know maybe you're playing it by yourself and you just want to vary it by yourself that's fine what you can do is hold a long note instead so you go so that, so that roll roll the B and A so a long note can just be the note like but that's very boring so what I like to do is I lengthen the note by rubbing my finger off the note underneath so in this case B A B and then a cut so see that can kind of add a nice variation to your tune and give it more interest to the ear because remember you're playing this three times around so everyone's going to hear the parts uh, six times right so you have to vary it now you don't have to go wild and vary it every time but you have to vary it so <clears throat> yeah excuse me the last thing you can try and do to vary it particularly this is very useful at the end and beginning of parts so I'll do it at the end of the first part and this is the, the Sligo style of blowing the octaves it's called well they call it blowing the octaves and that's where if for example as in Cooley's reel the first part ends on a low setting so it ends in the lower octave but you blow that as the higher octave and it leads into the second half which is in starts in the higher octave alternatively to reverse it you can start the second half in the lower octave and go up again and that kind of helps the two sets of the tune meld together now you don't want to do this every time because you want the variation so if you do it every time it'll be as dull as if you did it none of the times if you get me so it'll be something a bit like that's it normally and then so instead of going to end it you go that leads into the second half starting on the high G and coming around again so that's what I like to do it's a ma mash of styles from different parts of the country but sure that's the modern world we live in isn't it Um. so yeah I will finish off now by playing the tune V in my own style at the speed I'd like to play it at by myself um, which will be more or less session speed particularly in maybe some of the faster sessions around Roscommon or Dublin or something and uh, yeah let me know what you think I hope you found something useful in this and if there's anything you'd like me to talk about or any requests you have, sure, I suppose let me know in the comments below.